Well, thanks, Matt, for that information on how to make a new par and a new green in regulation and not counting your score. Fantastic. But how do we take that onto the golf course? Well, players, this is how. And this may be where I do lose you, in fact, because this is against the grain. This is different. This is not what you're going to hear somewhere else. This is not, good. This is not in the marketing channels where they're trying to sell you more and more stuff. This is the bare bones system that not only is it going to help you break 100, but it's going to help you break every other scoring barrier in your life in the golf course. Because you know why? This is the backbone of your bag. We are going to create the skeleton of your golf bag. You can then add the arms, legs, toes and fingers, but this is your spine, your hips, your whatevers and your head. This is the basic central nervous system. From there, you can branch off later, but this is to simplify this game because we have too much decision paralysis and we have too much in our head and delusions that we get from watching stuff on television and where people are trying to sell you a whole lot of stuff that you don't quite need just yet. Now, this is a 150 PSP system. 150 PSP. What the hell does that mean? Well, 150 is your 150 yard club. Yes, that's all. 150 yards. Do you have a club that goes 150 yards relatively reliably airborne most of the time? Of course you do. And if you don't, players, this is a genuine, this is a genuine concern I have, is that if you do not have a 150-yard reliable club, if you cannot hit a ball 150 yards reliably, you need to seek professional assistance in helping you to hit a golf ball. You cannot play golf of any caliber that you would like to play if you can't hit the ball 150 yards relatively easily. That is the fact of the matter. Go get that sorted out and then come back and continue. But until you get that sorted, it's not really golf. You're going to be playing pitch and putt, pitch and putt golf courses. Now, 150 yard club. A lot of people will watch my videos and think, okay, I'm hitting six iron off the tee, therefore, I, he's hitting six iron off the tee, therefore I must hit six iron off the tee. No, I hit six iron off the tee in that video because that's the club that used to go 175 plus for me in the breaking 90 video. When I say 150 yard club, I can't spoon feed this to you. You need to know which club you hit that goes 150 to 160 yards. Which club do you hit? For me, if I had to take this club, a nice safe one, I would take my eight iron. It's guaranteed to go at least 150 re reliably and reliably straight, okay? Some people that might be a six iron. For some people, this might even be their four iron. Who knows? Whatever it is, it might even be a damn hybrid. You could even get yourself a lovely seven wood. You could even get yourself some form of a hybrid iron. It's up to you. But the main point is 150 yards is what we need. The P stands for pitching wedge. Now, a pitching wedge is a great club. It's very versatile. We can use it for chipping. We can use it for short pitches. And we can use it for the game inside 100 yards. Often, for me, this club goes about 135 yards, so that's where I use it from 135 yards and in. So around the greens you can use this, you can use it for full shots, pitch shots, many kinds of things. That's why it's so versatile. We're killing a few birds with one stone here. After you've got your pitching wedge, you want to get your sand wedge. Now the sand wedge is up to you. Do you like a 56? Do you like a 54? Who knows? Whichever degree you like, you're going to need one. 54 or 56 degree. Why do we have the sandwich? This is for full shots inside about 90 yards or 85 yards. This is for sand shots from the bunkers at the green side. This is for short chips and this is for chipping over things. Do you see how we've covered a lot of shots here? That one covers our par threes and our tee shots and our approach shots. This is our chipping. This is our inside 100 yard club. Chipping and pitching and less than 100 yards. This one is our sand shots, this is our chip, this is our pitch, this is our over, over stuff club, okay, and this is our inside, maybe, maybe 85 yards, I don't know, whatever distance you hit the ball. That's going to cover most of the golf course. Then over here, of course, we need another P, that's your putter. You need a putter. And the thing with the putter is you need to practice this thing as much as you can to get everything down to two putts. But nobody practices this. Everybody wants to ignore all of these shots and they want to go to the driving range to smash driver as much as they can because they think that's going to lower their scores. Nope, this is going to get you under 100, guaranteed. Now, what is the asterisk you may be asking? Well, the asterisk is an optional club, players. 
This is an optional club. Please use your discretion because if you do have a club that goes 170 yard plus, that is going to be an extremely advantageous situation to be in. And when I say 170 yard plus, I do not mean 175 yards. I mean anything more than 175, but pick only one. This can be a hybrid, it can be a three wood, it can even be your driver. Whatever you like to hit and is reliable, at least six to seven out of 10 shots. We cannot be hitting a driver that gets us into the fairway or into a reasonable area two out of 10 shots and the other eight are disasters, just destroying our score. If you have a club that goes more than 170 yards and you're happy is six to seven to out of 10 times very reliable, play that. Now, that could be a fairway wood, a hybrid or anything. Just pick it and be honest with yourself whether it's good or bad. We don't want a club that's gonna be good one out of 10 or two out of 10 times and the other eight leave you in a disaster position. 150 yard club, pitching wedge, sand wedge, putter and an optional club that may help you to get a bit more distance off the tee and on approach shots, but it must be reliable. The, the 150 yard club is gonna be way more reliable. Higher loft, less spray. Lower loft, more spray. Please understand, this is not an ego system. This is the functional basic system of how to break 100. And we are not gonna be playing 7,000 yard golf courses 6,800 yard golf courses that are set up for longer hitters. This is not flash. This is not PGA Tour golf, but you are not playing PGA Tour golf. If you try to, you will destroy your enjoyment of the game. We are going to play shorter tees. If you don't have, if your course is 6,500 yard tees from the men's or the club tees, and the seniors are 6,000 to 6,200 yards, please understand the golf course should also understand that you're a newer player and you are going out there to try and improve and have more confidence so that you can come to the club more often so that you can play more and meet more people and spend more money at the club. If they outlaw you playing these tees, find another golf course with multiple tee variations so you can play this distance. But if they're forcing you to play those distance uh, golf courses, then find another club or play the first tee from the, the, the club tees and then play the forward tees for the rest of the round until you come into the clubhouse. Now you might be saying, well Matt, that's only four clubs. That's crazy. Why aren't we using all 14? Well, if you're looking to break 100, okay, we need to reduce the decision paralysis and the anxiety because you have too many options in the bag, not knowing what the hell's going on. So we wanna build the skeleton of the golf bag and you can add shots as you go. You can add clubs as you start to lower your score and eventually you'll probably build your bag up to 14. Some people play with 10 clubs, some people play with 12 and they play off single figure handicaps. So let, let's not get too uh, into the why don't I have 14 clubs in the bag, because you don't need them. What do I mean backbone? I mean players, because you're gonna be hitting these clubs so often, so regularly, and they're all you're gonna have, you're gonna get so good at them that you're gonna become a boss with them. You're gonna become intimate with your clubs. You're gonna know how they perform, how they work, what kind of shot you can hit, how they bounce, how they react with the turf, how the ball comes out of the face. You're gonna know these four clubs plus your putter so intimately that it's gonna help you to be a better player. It's easier to become a master of these four or five clubs than to be very mediocre with 14 clubs in your back. Now when I say the backbone, 150 yard club is gonna be your go-to club once you get better. Once you start hitting something longer off the tee like a drive or a three wood to break lower scores, you're gonna be trying to set up the 150 yard shot like I often do. I like to hit a nine or eight iron into a green. That is how the backbone works, okay? We have all these things that we learn. In here, we have the putter. So we have the putter. You can look up online putting drills and go and practice that practice that they recommend for putting, okay? So that's one branch of your nervous system. Next is gonna be your sandwich. You, you, you take that with you and you take the get it on the green idea. Well, you're not trying to flop it next to the hole. You're just trying to learn to hit this thing on the green. You find out your distance. What's your distance with a sandwich? Find out your distance, the full distance, okay? Once you start getting more confident and more intimate knowledge with it, you can start looking up people like Dave Pulse. Dave Pulse has 
a system with a clock. So you can use your backswing to control the distance of the shot. Your sandwich then gets turned into being a one club distance or one distance club change into a three or four distance club depending on the swing you use. That's as you advance, okay? Then we get the pitching wedge. Now, because of this, we have a hundred and in yard club, a hundred yards and in, 110 yards and in. That gives you a full shot. You can do a three quarter shot. That gives you a chipping club. See, you get intimate knowledge because you only have these to use. You're not getting confused. What do I chip with? Chip with a pitching wedge. Okay, you got something to carry? Chip with a sandwich. Easy life. Now you can use the same concept I talked about with Dave Pulse for three or four different um, distance backswings and you can turn that into a club with three or four different distances. So you're creating an arsenal of shots here that are going to hold you in good stead for the future. Then we also have the 150 yard club. Now this one you're going to get intimate knowledge about where does it go? Is it normally a draw? Is it normally a fade? The, does this club carry 150? Okay, this one's going about 142. Put it back in the bag, pull out one longer. That one has to go. It goes 152, 155 carry. We must know the carry distance of all these clubs. You must know the carry distance of all these clubs so you can make better decisions, okay? Carry distance so we can carry hazards, so we can prevent ourselves landing in things over the back of the green. And then, once we get a bit better, we get onto the 175 yard plus club and that club is going to take you to the next level of breaking 90. That can be a hybrid, that can be a wood, anything you want. But you can see you have five clubs, that's the backbone of your game. With all of these things interconnected, remember we talked about how interconnected they all are. That starts to link up the nerves that stem into your brain, your golf brain, and it switches it on. Bing! It switches on your brain which starts the process in your brain of course management. It starts the process in your brain of emotional control. It starts the process in your brain of lower expectations, of thinking your way around a golf course. Once you have this switched on, these things all lead to your, your central nervous system being switched on inside your golf brain and you become someone who's unstoppable because you start to believe in yourself. You start to have confidence. You start to understand how to manage a course. You start to understand how to play your game and dictate to the golf course how you want to play the game. The golf course doesn't play you, you play the golf course. And once you can do that and you start to improve your skills with these clubs and then you start to add in other clubs because your skills are improving. Because now you can hit different shots, okay? Now you start to add in all your mid irons. Once you get to do this, that's when your scores just start dropping. Now if you can get these things right in the beginning from when you're struggling to break 100, you are going to be an 80s shooter within a year or two. I can guarantee it. If you follow it like this and you get good at these things and you, you focus on your short game, you switch on your brain, you find the key I give you and you take that key and you find the lock that needs to be unlocked wherever it is, you free your mind, your game will follow. It's basic. I'm not BSing you here. It's the backbone. We just need a backbone. Without a backbone, you're going to have all the arms, legs, bones, and toes in the world. It won't mean anything unless you have the backbone sorted out. And this is it.